last video we gave an overview of how the QR factorization works when we use householder transformations. Let's dive a little bit more into the details. So here I've depicted sort of a typical state in the matrix, where in this case we've processed two columns, but those could represent an arbitrary number of columns, and the rest of the matrix has been updated according to the householder transformations that were computed and applied in the, in, before. So we can partition this into quadrants and say, okay, this part contains already part of the matrix R that we want to compute, as does this right here. Zeros have been placed below it, and this part of the matrix has been updated according to previous computation. And, you know, a detail is that we may have used these zeros to store the householder vectors that we computed previously, but let's not worry about that. If we now go over here, we can capture that picture by saying, okay, at the current moment we have overwritten the top left part with R, as well as the top right part. We have computed zeros below that, and then this part of the matrix has been updated according to householder transformations that were computed previously. And what is it that we want to do in the current step? Well, in the current step, we really want to be able to focus on this part of the matrix because that is what we compute our uh, householder vector from. That's what we compute our next householder transformation from. So, in order to facilitate that, let's relabel this R00. Let's split off the first column here, and then we have the rest of the columns. And this here becomes a row of zeros with a block of zeros below it. And this submatrix becomes alpha11, a21, a12 transpose, a22, where this is part of a row vector, which is why we label it with this transpose. And over here, you know, that is roughly the same as exposing this and that. Now, the purpose of the cane becomes to place zeros here. And we discussed in the last unit a function, as well as an implementation of that function, where if we bring in a vector x, exposing the first element explicitly, we return the vector, well, the scalar that multiplies the first unit, the first standard basis vector, and then u2 below it, where does that come from? Well, we know that the householder vector has a 1 in its first entry, and therefore we only need to compute the rest of that vector. And then the scalar tau by which we have to scale to make it into a reflector. So if we go over here, we have now exposed this first entry and the rest of the vector from which we compute our household vector. And therefore, we can take that, we can plug it into our function, we get back this right here, and that gives us all the information for the householder vector, the householder transformation. Um, and let's just label this part U21 to recognize that it's computed from A21 and it can overwrite A21. Now, we want that householder transform to only apply to the bottom set of rows, and therefore this really, strictly speaking, is part of a bigger matrix where we have an identity here and zero blocks right there. Now, when we apply that to this matrix, we know that the first blocks of rows are left alone by design. We know that this, these blocks of zeros are multiplied by this, but if you multiply zeros by anything, you get zeros back. We know that this, by design, this householder transformation, when applied to this, will give a, ve gives a vector row 1, 1, with zeros below it. And now all we need to do is figure out how this householder transformation updates this part of the matrix right here. So let's investigate that. 
And I'm going to write this, uh, let's see, let's write this out. This is what we want to compute. Okay? Now, you could go and form this entire matrix and then do a matrix matrix multiply, but forming this matrix is actually order n squared computation and then applying it is order n cubed computation. And that gets way too expensive. So the way you do this instead is you recognize that this can be written as the identity times that. minus, and let's rearrange this a little bit, okay? Now, by writing it like this, which is equivalent to that, we recognize that we can do 1 times A21 transpose plus U21 Hermitian times A22, and then scale that by a scalar. This right here we can call the vector, or the row vector W transpose. And notice that it is computed by mostly uh, a row times a matrix multiply, which of course is just like a matrix times vector multiply. And then a column vector times a row vector, that's an outer product, so this is really a rank one update. And if you work this out, the net result of this is, uh, actually we can write that in right here, it's A12 transpose minus W, that's this minus 1 times W transpose, and then A22 minus u21, which is a column vector, times w transpose, which is a row vector. And what we see is that most of the computation is in a row times matrix multiply and a rank 1 update, which is a whole lot cheaper than doing a matrix matrix multiply, which is what we would have had to do if we'd explicitly formed this particular matrix. And then, you know, we move forward. We now are done up to this point. We have introduced zeros right here. We move forward and we do the next iteration. So this gives you some of the details that you need to actually implement this as an algorithm.